Welcome, everybody. I'm Rowan Crockett, Grower Services Manager for our Northern Region, and I'll be your host for this webinar, which is being held in place of physical grower meetings for our Fallon, Torwood, Bungunya, Tabia, Gundawindi East and West, Bogabilla, and Yalaban sites. 2020 has certainly been a big year for everyone. And while a lot of things haven't gone to plan this year, one positive has been the return to near average rainfall for our region. As a result, we find ourselves on the doorstep of what looks like being the best harvest for a number of seasons. While it's an exciting time for the industry, there is also a lot riding on this crop. And we are not underestimating the importance of getting this crop off to generate some badly needed cash flow for rural communities. This evening, you will hear updates on a variety of topics around delivering safely to your Grain Corp site this harvest. No doubt, some of the topics discussed will lead to further questions. You have probably noticed by now, this session is equipped with a chat feature on the right-hand side of your screen. You're more than welcome to put forward questions at any time, and we will have left some time at the end of the webinar to answer your questions. And, and we'll focus on, on any questions that, that are not covered off during the presentation. Given it's a busy time of year, I'll aim to wrap up in under an hour. So please understand, we may not be able to drill down into too many site-specific details, but please rest assured, if you do ask a question and it doesn't get answered on the call, then the appropriate person will follow up in the next couple of days with a call to, to discuss your question or issue. Now, to kick off our presentations this evening, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Robert Spurway, our Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, to say a few words. Good evening, Robert. Over to you. Uh, thanks, Rowan. And importantly, good evening to everyone joining us tonight. Um, as Rowan said, we've gone digital this year. Uh, that's a disappointment in some respects, but I think we all understand the reasons for that, given the adjustments we've had to make around pandemic controls and, and COVID. Uh, I've enjoyed getting out and meeting a few uh, of our growers uh, and looking forward to being able to meet many more of you. So one thing about going digital is it is an efficient way to meet people, uh, just not as effective. So I look forward to uh, more time in the future to, to meet properly. Uh, look, this evening, I, rather than a presentation, I just want to make a few general and introductory comments. And then, as Rowan said, important that the team have the opportunity to share more detail with you and answer any of your questions. At Grain Corp, uh, like you, we're absolutely delighted to see that we're looking at much better growing conditions and a much stronger crop. I'm certainly very aware of how tough the last few years have been. Uh, as a grower and in the communities where many of you live and, and work. Uh, so we're pleased that you're uh, with us tonight and we're certainly looking forward to partnering with you for this upcoming harvest. Um, just a couple of updates in our business. As many of you will know, I joined Grain Corp just under six months ago now. Uh, it's a great time to have joined the business, of course, and delighted to be here. Um, it's been a busy time for Grain Corp. We obviously completed the demerger of the malt business and the associated restructuring. Um, what that has meant is that we're in a really strong position. Uh, we're a really focused business, focused on uh, your grains uh, and our partnership with you. Uh, we're well-funded and financed. And importantly, the last six months has really been about a singular focus on setting up for the harvest making sure we've looked back as to what's gone on in, in recent years and making sure we're really ready to, to perform beyond your expectations in this upcoming harvest. Um, we are in a strong position for that and we started our planning some months ago. I was delighted to join Grain Corp at a time when the rain was starting and uh, from early on the, the crop was looking promising and that's still the case of course. Uh, we started planning labour early and we're looking to take on about 3,000 harvest casuals across East Coast Australia. As of this week, we've had over 5,000 applications. So really exciting to see the interest. And that's all about making sure that we've got the right people in the right place to service the sites uh, that you deliver to. Um, one of the challenges is, of course, making sure we're ready to deal with restrictions of moving people 
as part of keeping you safe, keeping our business safe and being reliable through the upcoming harvest. As well as labour, we've also, over the last several months, invested significantly in getting ready for the harvest. Uh, we have the funding that we need in place. Uh, we've acquired new tarpaulins after three years of drought. Uh, we've also acquired equipment uh, so that we're ready at all of the sites for the, the harvest. So we're looking forward to that. I did just want to um, finish off with a few words about COVID-19. It's obviously been an unprecedented year in many, many ways. Uh, but one of the great things about agriculture generally, I think, is our resilience. Uh, not just Grain Corp, but all of you have had to respond to tough events like droughts before. And in Grain Corp, we've been very resilient to prepare for uh, the harvest in a safe way. As I have been able to get out and about around New South Wales in particular, I haven't been able to go too much further than that uh, recently with border closures. One of the things I hear growers say that's so important to them uh, is the turnaround time at harvest um, and the safety and reliability at harvest. Uh, so that's something that uh, we've spent a lot of time preparing for. Our digital solutions will come into play. So Crop Connect, Fastway um, are are solutions that will not only improve our ability to service you at harvest time in an efficient way, uh, but also to do that in a safe way. Uh, so things will look a little bit different at sites this year, but that is all about ensuring that we can do it efficiently and importantly safety so that we're, safely so that we're there uh, over the, the full harvest for you. And the team tonight are going to talk a little bit about that. Um, you will have heard us talk about some of those areas, but tonight we're looking forward to talking with you in a bit more detail about what that means, what to expect when you turn up at our sites. Um, look, um, finally, um, I did just want to um, really close by saying thank you again for joining us. Uh, we look forward to a safe harvest, and we certainly wish you a very safe harvest and a prosperous harvest. Um, I look forward to being able to get out and about as much as I can through the harvest period. Um, and our team, in any case, will absolutely be there to support you. Uh, so we're looking forward to the next uh, 45 minutes or so to share those details with you, and uh, the team will certainly answer any questions you might have at the end of that. So thank you. Nice to meet you all this evening. Thanks, Robert. Appreciate your words, and, and certainly look forward to seeing you out and about in the region in, in the near future. Thank you. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, 2020 has certainly been a year of surprises, and I'm certain most would agree COVID-19 has been the biggest of them all. At Grain Corp, we're certainly taking the COVID-19 situation very seriously, and I'd now like to welcome our next guest, Brad Foster, Queensland Operations Manager, to share with us his, he and his team's plan for developing and, and ensuring that our customers and staff remain safe this harvest and our sites remain open for deliveries. Welcome, Brad. Hey, Rowan, thanks very much for having me. Pleasure. Um, can you start by just giving us some insights into the measures you and your team have, have introduced to help keep everyone safe this harvest and, and our sites open? Yeah, sure. Um, so obviously, as we all know, COVID's been around since about March this year, um, and we've been working through a number of different scenarios and strategies um, through that period. Um, I guess in a way, we've been a little bit lucky to, to have a head start in Queensland around COVID with our sorghum harvest. Um, so we were bringing um, seasonal workers in. Uh, we've been working in seasonal worker health plans that were set up for, for each site um, that we have a, across our Queensland network. Um, we've also been working with cross-border health checks. Um, so a number of contractors have been coming across the, the border for capital and maintenance plans. Um, so, you know, we, we've got robust plans developed to, to ensure we work safely um, with our staff and with our contractors. We've certainly had limited interaction internally. Um, so limiting our, our travel as much as possible while still being able to, to provide the service we need to with um, receiving and our turning grain through that period. Um, more confined to the, the Gundy area, we've been working with um, local government and politicians on the border crossings. 
Uh, so places like Gundawindi and, and Hebel, um, obviously we can get through okay across there. But then when we look at Yalabin and Torwood, um, you know, we're, we've got the gates and what have you that we're, we need to work uh, with the government there. So we're, we're having those conversations and very hopeful uh, that we'll, we'll have a better outcome come harvest for, for getting through those areas. Um, one thing I would encourage growers to do if you're crossing the border from New South Wales into Queensland is to to get the ag exemption sorted out um, early. So you can require um, apply for that, sorry, at the, the border crossings. Basically, what you would need is um, ag exemption from the, the Queensland Chief uh, Medical Officer, um, your photo ID and also proof of ag, ag exemption, such as a, a property registration. Um, so really encourage people to do that if they want to cross the border seamlessly. Right. Thanks, Brad. Certainly sounds like there's been a, a lot happening in that space in, in the last couple of months. So, Brad, if I can and put my grower's hat on now and, and um, can you just give me some insight if, if I'm a grower that turns up with our, our first load of the season, what, what changes I'm going to notice at my local site? Yeah, sure. Um, as Robert alluded to, these, you know, we're certainly going to, to need to change a few things for this coming harvest. Um, and it's just to keep everyone safe. So, you know, no different if, if you're going to your local pub or restaurant or what have you. Um, so the first thing you'll really notice a difference in, um, in stepping through the process in looking around the site is we're going to have QR codes um, up around the site. So on the signage as you come into the site at the sample stand, Waybridge, what have you, we'll have a number of QR codes around. Um, again, similar to I know with my um, son's junior rugby, um, my daughter's soccer and what have you, um, same thing as there where you, you get your camera or smartphone, um, sign into the QR code uh, so we can say that you, you've been on site for, for tracing purposes. Um, for those who, who mightn't have a smartphone um, or left it behind or what have you, uh, we've certainly got um, paper versions manually on site. Um, so once you've signed in, Another key change is we need delivery advice forms filled out for each and every load um, that comes into Grain Corp this year, and this is all to minimise contact um, between people. So we're going to send that out um, electronically, uh, contact your local site manager or grain merchant if you do need copies of it. We're also going to keep copies in the sample stand. Uh, but really helps if you, you pre-populate those forms. Um, and that's just the, the normal questions we always ask you on site. Um, what's the variety of your grain? What's the rego? What paddock number, et cetera? Um, so if that's all pre-populated, that will really help. Um, only staff are allowed in the sample stand way bridges, so we're going to have to, to keep people out um, and again that's because of social distancing we really need to, to limit that contact. Um, the sample docket will be provided at the sample stand for you. Um, another really important change is that warehouse is the only option this year. Um, Tom Grant will, will touch on this for you shortly um, but it, your grain will go into warehouse and then transfer through Crop Connect or a, a, or a hotline number um, that will also provide for you. Um, once you've got that sample docket, we're changing the font and what have you. So it's a, a big font um, that's on those dockets. So when you go to the hopper, the hopper attendant will be able to see that uh, they won't sign and what have you like they usually do. Uh, so you'll tip off the grain and then capture the tear weight and, um, and head off with your delivery docket from there. So we're, we're trying to limit the contact as much as we can. There are a few changes, but, um, you know, that's a process where we're going through to keep everyone safe. Right. Thanks, Brad. And, and uh, in, in your expert opinion, do you think it'll make much difference to truck turnarounds at site? 
Yeah, that's a good question, Rowan, isn't it? Um, I guess time will tell. But, you know, certainly, you know, if everyone's pre-populating those delivery advice forms, it, it should really, in my mind, speed up the process and um, not having our hopper attendant sign forms and, and what have you, the minimal contact. Um, some people like to talk a bit and what have you in a sample stand and, you know, which can hold up the process a bit. So I really think this will, will actually speed things things up. Very good. Now, Brad, I've just got a few other quick questions for you. These ones are probably probably uh, just to clarify a, a few rumours or myths that have been going around about changes that some of them were, were floating around even before we, we came out with our policy. So just a couple of quick questions, if you could answer them for us. Um, first one is, is will Grain Corp staff be, be unrolling tarps and, and cracking tailgates on trucks this year? Um, no, but uh, that has been the, the case for a number of years now. Um, you know, it's not just around COVID, but but that certainly makes it more the case that, um, you know, we, we shouldn't be touching different things that, that other people have contact with. But as I said, that's been the case for a number of years now. So, no, we won't be um, unrolling tarps or, or opening tailgates. Very good. What about uh, growers taking samples in to, to get tested? We is, is that still able to, to happen this year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, always welcome testing samples and what have you. Um, it's a good point, though. Sorry, Rowan. One point I, I should have ranged, uh, raised before um, around the, the COVID testing and what have you. Um, we will need to receive samples in disposable bags. Um, you know, if you can get a, a Ziploc bag or something along those lines from the, a local supermarket, um, we need about a kilo or a litre of sample to be able to, to test those samples. Um, the reason for that, again, with traceability and what have you, we can't take the old ice cream container or oil tin or what have you and, and hand it back. We do need something disposable. Um, we will keep some bags and what have you on our sample stands as well, but it would certainly help if um, if growers are able to, to just bring in those disposable bags. Um, we will test the samples as soon as we can and, and bring the results and what have you back through to you, um, but deliveries do take precedence, so just have a bit of patience, please, if, um, if there are trucks in the queue. Great. Thanks, Brad. Um, and what about as, as far as receiving a, a paper delivery docket as, as I leave the site after tearing off? Would that still be the case? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're, we're going to provide the, the sample docket, um, as I discussed before. So that will be the main piece of paper that you show as you go around the site. But as you tear out on the way bridge, a delivery docket uh, will be given to the driver as well so you can keep it for records and what have you. So that will still be provided. Um, we're just minimising the contact through the process as much as we can. Great. Thanks, Brad. Look, the only other one from, from me was just around that delivery advice you mentioned when, when we turn up and have to have one. Inevitably, there'll there'll be one get lost on the way, or or a truck that forgets to grab one. What what will happen if a truck turns up without that delivery advice? Yeah, sure. Um, so we're not able to process any trucks um, without a delivery advice, but we will provide those forms on site. Um, so if you've got a driver carrying for you, um, the driver will have to step off to the side and make a phone call and uh, fill out that advice. But we, we absolutely need those advice forms um, to be able to process any of the loads. Great. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate your update. And, and I'm sure there'll, there'll be uh, further questions come, come out of this before we, we see harvest. So Where's the, the best place for, for growers to go with their questions from here on, on how this COVID policy will operate? Yeah, we'll provide uh, contact lists um, that will come out through electronic means or, or um, you know, we'll provide numbers and what have you for your local site managers. So key contact is your local site manager, um, area manager and grain merchant. So please go to those people and they'll be able to get the answers for you. Perfect. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much and uh, good luck with Harvest, everyone.
Um, just before I move on to introducing our next guest, I, I should mention that we have Matt Simon on the line tonight. Matt's our, our quality assurance manager in, in Toowoomba. Um, he's not going to present tonight, but we'll certainly be, be on the line for, for any questions later on. So please, if there's any, any questions are around sort of quality specific topics or uh, MRLs, et cetera, please, please feel free to send them through and, and I'm sure Matt will be happy to, to answer them later on. Uh, now I'd like to, to move on to our next guest, Bradley Siddons, uh, who's the area manager for, for our Gundawindi cluster of sites. Good evening, Bradley. How are you? Yeah, very well, thanks, Rowan. Pleasure to be here. That's good. Um, understand it's been a pretty busy couple of months within the cluster. Can you just give us a bit of an insight into to what's been going on? Yeah, certainly. It has been a busy time, but it's also been a very exciting time. Our, our sites, obviously, a couple of them have been uh, relatively quiet over, over recent years, so we've, we've had to do quite a bit of work to get them uh, ready to go. Our, uh, our civil works is, uh, is being done at the moment, so the, uh, the, you know, the graders and uh, water trucks and rollers are, are just finishing off the, uh, the bunkers uh, uh, towards this weekend and into next weekend, and that side of things will be ready to go. Uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah, when you have quiet times, the uh, staff numbers tend to drop off a little bit as well, and, and that certainly has been a, a consequence for us. So uh, another key point of what we've been focusing on is, is getting those key staff into the, uh, in the, into the key positions so that we are you know, ready to handle the, the harvest that comes to us. And, and the last piece, of course, and, and a really critical piece that, uh, that, that uh, Robert touched on earlier was the, uh, the actual the casual labour that we need to bring in into site as well to make sure that we have the uh, the trained staff on the ground to uh, to do all that key work that, that is needed to be done. Great, thanks, Bradley. And you mentioned you've you've been rebuilding that that core group of staff. Can you just give us a quick quick run through of who you've got on the ground in in the key posts for this harvest? Yeah, certainly, Rowan. Uh, in uh, at Gundawindi West, we, we've uh, you know, we've, we've got um, Russell Coot, who's obviously been with us for quite a period of time. So he has a, a lot of experience with Grain Corp and, and a lot of experience, uh, you know, with our site and how it operates. Uh, similarly, at uh, to be a Bungunya and Torwood, we, we have Stephen Coot in place there. Again, uh, a lot of experience with Grain Corp and, and with those sites. Uh, at Gundawindi East, we have a, a new new site manager. Wayne Ward has joined us. He uh, he has uh, been with us for a couple of years, but he's uh, recently transferred to to Gundawindi East. He, he joins us from uh, from Capella, where uh, you know, he's been fortunate the last couple of years up there, where he has been able to uh, receive a harvest. So he comes with recent experience uh, and certainly experience with Crane Corp and our systems. And then lastly, uh, Mike Morgan joined us not long ago as our uh, site manager for Thallon. And Mike is certainly very uh, enthusiastic about the, the challenge and, and the uh, experience that, that taking a, a harvest of Thallon will bring. Uh, each have prepared a, a short video uh, to introduce themselves. So, uh, yeah, we'll show that video now, please. Yeah, good afternoon. Michael Morgan here, new site manager at Thallon for Grain Corp. I'm new to Grain Corp. Moved down from Mundubra. Grew up in the River in New South Wales. Married to the beautiful Jodie with three hooligans. They'll be joining me at the end of the year. Uh, I look forward to meeting all the growers and a big harvest coming up. Thanks. Stephen Coote, site manager of Bungunya, Tuber and Torwood. After a couple of lean years, hopefully we'll see you in the upcoming months through the harvest period. Really look forward to communicating and handling your grain. Any dramas along the way, feel free to always give me a call. Hi, I'm Russell Coote, uh, site manager of Gundawindi West. I've worked here at Grain Corp now for 38 years in various roles along the whole line. Mainly, mainly yes, uh, site manager. Uh, after three years of drought, looking forward to some grain. Please don't hesitate and contact me if you've got any worries or queries. Thank you. Hi, I'm Wayne Ward. I currently have been with Grain Corp for the past two years. I've just moved down from Capella, which I've done a couple of harvests now. Um, I'll be the site manager for Gundawindi East, Yalabin and Bogabilla. Um, I will be contactable at any time of the day, night, whatever suits. Um, really looking forward to meeting everyone and uh, looking really forward to a really good year. Thank you. 
So that, that they're our site managers. They're on the ground. They're ready to go, and they're really enthusiastic, as you as you heard about the upcoming harvest. The, and then the, the last piece of the puzzle, though, is uh, as of Monday next week, uh, John Appleby will join us as the, the area manager for Gundawindi. I've had the uh, the pleasure of uh, acting in that capacity for the last couple of months, but I'll be returning to my uh, substantive position as uh, HR business partner for Queensland. So, so yeah, John joins us from uh, Swan Hill, and, and he has uh, vast experience as an area manager, so a real asset to our team. Great. Thanks, Bradley. Certainly sounds like you've got the, the right people in place and, and are ready to go, which is fantastic. I um, guess that leads me to the, the million-dollar question. What can growers expect when they deliver to their grain corp site this year? Yeah, what we think they'll experience are, are sites ready to go, ready to receive their grain and ready to handle their grain. You know, we, we've, got, uh, we, you know, we, we've got ourselves organised. We've got um, four of the, uh, the five stackers that we'll have at, at Thallon. Uh, the fifth one will be delivered to Thallon and ready to go next week. So all, all that big gear will be in place uh, prior to the, the commencement of grain. The, the only site where uh, we, we won't have the stacker in place beforehand is at, at Yalabin. Uh, it'll be arriving uh, towards the end of October and it will uh, certainly be in place in time to, to put the bunker together there at Yalabin. Um, but yes, the, the, sites, the, the sites are empty. Uh, we've got plenty of storage capacity, so we're, uh, yeah, very much got sites ready to go, and and we'll be looking at um, uh, the, the way we operate Gundy uh, Gundy Windy East this time will be a, a little bit different to, to previous years. We'll, we'll have that site open for a, a longer a longer period each day to take that pressure off uh, Gundy Windy West that uh, previously has gone that way. Right. Thank you. Um, look, I guess you you touched on stackers being in place, and and I guess something that has been raised as an issue in in previous years was was that equipment was pulled out of the region too early uh, before before harvest was was over and and did cause some concern for for some growers can you just give us a feel for if there's been any any changes put in place to make sure that doesn't happen in the future yeah sure thanks Rowan. the um i understand it has been a frustration in the past that you know some of those uh, stackers have been packed up and moved south sooner than uh, you know growers in our region would like uh, over the last couple of years, though, we, we have invested uh, fairly substantially in, in more infrastructure. Uh, that that infrastructure is is in place in Victoria, which which alt and southern New South Wales, and you know that, that reduces the, uh, the the demand for the stackers that we use in Queensland, and, and that means we will have that equipment uh, to use for a longer period of time. So we're not anticipating those same problems this year. Sounds like a, a really positive step. Uh, what about segregations, Bradley? Can you just run us through sort of what what you'll be taking where? Yeah, certainly. So if I if I start at the uh, at the western most site and move in, we'll be taking uh, wheat, uh, chickpeas, and barley at, at Thallon. Uh, as we come into uh, to Torwood, it'll be uh, wheat and uh, and barley. Uh, Bungania will take wheat and chickpeas. Um, Tabea will take uh, wheat and barley. Same as Torwood again. Uh, then when we get into uh, Gundawindi West, so Gundawindi West will take uh, all commodities that we're taking. So it will have uh, wheat, it'll have barley, chickpeas. It'll also is, is likely to have canola, which will be the first time we've, we've taken canola there. Um, the, the the wheat and and uh, and canola will be the primary primary sites for those. Uh, we'll also be having um, we'll, we'll take malt barley at uh, Gundawindi West as well. Uh, as a uh, an extra drop off point for when Bogabilla uh, closes of an evening, uh, Bogabilla while I'm on it will will take uh, both feed and and malt barley. Uh, that malt variety being uh, Commander, uh, Gundawindi East, as I mentioned before, will um, will be a key site for the, for the operation of Gundawindi West. Uh, it'll be uh, barley and, and chickpeas. Uh, so the intention is to take the majority of the barley and chickpeas that that come into to Gundawindi at Gundawindi East, and it'll only be um, on uh, occasions where, we, where it can't be handled, be it weather or other things, that we take those two commodities at Gundawindi West. Uh, and then lastly, at, uh, at Yalabin, we'll be receiving um, wheat and barley. So a really good mix, I think. Fantastic. Right? Yep, no, I'd agree. That sounds sounds like there's plenty of options there, and, and uh, yeah, Certainly, a few few efficiencies to be gained too in in changing a few things around at, at Gundawindi there. 
look, I guess the, the final one I've got for you, Bradley, was just around communication, which is, is obviously the key leading into and, and during that busy harvest period. Can you, can you just give us a feel for what info your, your team are, are wanting to hear from growers and, and also, I, I guess, a, a bit of insight into how your team will be communicating with growers during harvest? Yeah, sure. The, the really important thing for us to, to deliver the service that, uh, that I'm sure growers are wanting is to have the staff in, in place and on the ground. And you know, the best way that we can do that in, in a timely manner is with, with information beforehand. And so, so what we really, we're really asking for is you know, reliable information, or as reliable as you can provide you know, information on when, when, when the crops will be arriving so, so that we can get, get our employees in place so we, we're ready to go to extended shifts and, and, and 24 hours if need be at the sites where we have to. Uh, yes. So, you know, we, we, when we've got those sites running with, uh, you know, the, the manning levels that we need for those hours, that's when we really deliver the service that, that you know, we want to deliver. Uh, in terms of our communication back the other way, we, you know, what, what we need people to do is, is register for our text messages and uh, email communication systems that we send out. And, uh, you know, that's where we'll supp supply the information as to what's going on at site, you know, what the weather conditions are like and uh, what, what changes in hours and, and decisions we have to make so that um, you know, obviously uh, harvesters and growers can, can make their decisions around that information. Fantastic. Thank you and, and appreciate your time tonight. No problem. Thanks, Rowan. Thanks, everyone. Uh, look, next I'll, uh, I'll introduce uh, Tom Grant, who's our, our marketer for the Gundawindi cluster. But just before I do... Um, uh, just just a quick reminder that we do have the the chat feature for asking questions, so please please uh, do send them through. And and once we've finished with Tom, we'll, we'll certainly get to some questions then. Uh, yeah, so Tom's uh, recently rejoined Grain Corp after a, a few years away. Uh, he's been back on deck for about three months, and and his grain market are looking after the the Gundawindi Moree sort of border regions. Um, is, is certainly looking forward to, to getting to know you all over the next little while as, as harvest kicks off. Uh, so welcome, Tom. Yeah, thanks. Evening, Rowan. Uh, evening, everyone. Great to be here. Uh, Tom, I guess just sort of to kick off, it's, it's been a few years since, since a lot of people have, have had, a, had the opportunity to deliver much grain. So just wondered if you'd give us a, a bit of a checklist of the things that, that you'd advise growers to, to chase up on before the, the silly season starts. Yeah, um, I guess just first and foremost, um, given given the time uh, that's, that there's been since we have had um, most of our, or a, a fair chunk of our growers delivering, um, I guess it might be just a, a key time to, to dust off most of the, the logins and systems and, and databases that we as an industry use. So what I'd ask is that um, each of our growers to, to check in um, on your NGR details, so, so log into the NGR website. Um, check that you've got uh, your right um, address, contact details, um, payment information, and all that's up to date, just to make um, dealing through that database as effective and as efficient as possible. Um, second to that, uh, our, uh, our platform being Crop Connect, another one worthwhile. Um, if you don't have a Crop Connect login, it's, it's definitely worth jumping on the, the Crop Connect website um, to... Um, yeah, to, to set yourself up with the login and, and similarly if you if you already do have one, um, just check that those details are, are still true, present and correct um, and, and ready to go um, before things get really busy. Um, I think just, just as a, a third one for, for this particular harvest, um, given the, the new process around the delivery advice uh, form, it's uh, certainly worth growers just to jump onto our, our season up, update website and um, print yourself off uh, the, the delivery advice form or, or download that delivery advice form and then, and then print off a, a stack of those um, just ready to, to, to put in, in the trucks that are coming into the sites. Um, and, yeah, if we can get those three right, I think it'll be a long way to, to getting things right for an efficient um, delivery process. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, some good tips there. Um, very helpful. Thank you. Uh, look, next next one I'd have for you is... is um, we, we've probably spent a fair bit of time internally focusing on on trying to be a little bit easier to do business with than, than maybe some times in the past. Can you just give us a, a few ideas on on why you think Grain Corp will be, be easier to do business with this year? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one, one of the uh, the implementations, again, since the last significant harvest up here has been um, an additional month of free storage for all of our grower customers. So in the past, we've uh, facilitated the month of delivery plus one additional month of, of free storage. That's that's recently been updated to, um, to give an additional uh, free month storage. So month of delivery plus two. Um, and so now the only uh, only fees that the grower will see are, um, are those monthly storage fees once once that uh, free period um, expires. Um, as an additional kicker on top of that, we've actually changed the way that we invoice uh, our grower customers for their storage fees. So now you won't actually uh, be invoiced for any of those fees until you transfer that grain onto a buyer. So just an additional cash flow kicker um, to make things a bit easier. Um, as as we as we market our grain, the other one um, I just wanted to bring up is uh, when our growers are selling direct to Grain Corp as the buyer. What we've been able to do with um, some uh, improvements in our system is reduce our payment terms right into two days after the after the title transfer. So yeah, huge reduction in the time it takes to get paid when you're selling your grain to Grain Corp uh, delivered into our site. So yeah, just a couple of uh, um, Pro, uh, programs that we've implemented just, yeah, again, to make things uh, easy to do business with Grain Corp, which are really pleasing. Great. Thanks, Tom. Um, look, you, you alluded to briefly uh, in, in your first answer, Crop Connect, but can you just give us a bit more info as to to what growers can, can expect to see when they do log into Crop Connect and, and why that, that tool's improved a lot since since the previous big harvest we've had had in our area? Yeah, so Crop Connect's become our, it's really our key, um, uh, like, one-stop shop for, for growers once once you grow, your grain has been delivered um, into the system. Um, so you can log into Crop, to, Crop Connect to see your grower delivery summaries um, by grade and by site. Um, there you can see what all of the cash buyers are bidding um, in that program on any given day. You can transfer your grain against... Um, existing contracts, the sales contracts you might have, you can transfer it against the cash uh, cash bids that you're seeing, and you can also transfer into pools. So it's really become that um, that yeah that software system that that allows full transparency of of all grain through our system. I guess um, so. Yeah, as I was saying before, it's certainly worthwhile um, lo- uh, jumping on the Crop Connect website if you don't have a login. Um, certainly advise everyone to to get in there. And get themselves set up prior to harvest, and that'll give you full visibility of your stock um, once it's once it's into the bin. Yeah. And Tom, if I did need a bit of help with with getting set up or, or how to use Crop Connect, or, or if I'm I'm having trouble with the program and, and just need to get a, a transfer done during harvest, are there any other options for me, or where can I go for that help? Yep. So we've we've got our grower hotline running still. So that's one eight hundred grains. Um, so that puts you through to our, our grower experience team and they're actually, um, so they're based, based out of Tamworth now, they've been deployed into the region, so a little bit more of a local touch than they might have been in the past, um, but we've got a, an army of people um, sitting here in Tamworth ready to take, um, ready to take calls on, on all questions um, of, of dealing with, with stocks through, through the system. So, yeah, that 1-800 grains is certainly a, a good number to to um, remember for any of those questions. Very good. Thank you. Uh, look, another one that, that isn't new but, but uh, will be a while since, since people have, uh, have heard the term crop demiser. Can you, can you just give us a, a bit of an insight into to what crop demiser is and, and why it's, it's a valuable tool for growers? Yeah, absolutely. Crop demiser is something that we're really excited about. Um, it's something that we've been doing for a number of years, as you said, Rowan, but um, it's just how we um, – it's another way that we can facilitate um, additional value to growers delivering into our system. Um, so for those who aren't familiar with what Crop Optimizer is, um, it's a, a function to uh, upgrade an el- eligible grower ticket um, from one grade um, up to another one. So that's based on um, the, the eligibility of, first and foremost, the stack – that the, the grower is delivering the grain into. Um, you need to have um, uh, previously accumulated what we call um, quality equity um, and, and also um, 
that the ticket needs to be um, uh, eligible to be upgraded as well. So um, if, if we can get uh, three green lights on each of those parameters, uh, it allows us to, to upgrade a ticket from uh, one grade to the next. So um, to access that product, it's simply a matter of, of calling in to the, to the hotline, so the 1800 grains number again, um, and that team will be able to very quickly and, and efficiently um, facilitate any available upgrades that there may be uh, for, for our growers. Great. Thanks, Tom. Uh, and look, just, just one final one, I, I guess, um, ar around markets and, and pricing. Um, who, who is best for, for growers to contact if, if they do want to have a chat about the markets or, or like a, a price and, and would like to do some business? Um, yeah, certainly. Um, I'd encourage um, any of our listeners to to uh, pick up the phone and give me a call if um, you've got any questions on on anything going on in the market. Um, more than happy to to chat about it. If you, um, yeah, happy to, to help facilitate anything and um, yeah, and be as competitive as we as we possibly can. Certainly, um, with a large crop here on the east coast this year, we're, we're very excited about seeing um, our our level of exports um, increase from uh, from the last couple of years. And, and I know that to date, um, the Grain Corp commercial team have worked really hard on being as competitive as, as we possibly can um, to support the um, support all growers into our local sites. And, um, and to date, we've had um, some really good engagement on that. Um, and, and hopefully that's something that we, we can see continue um, as we get to the pointy, head, uh, pointy end of the growing season and into harvest as, it, as this crop starts to hit the bin. Right. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate your time tonight. Um, uh, look, that concludes our, our presenters for, for this evening's session. Um, we do have a, a few minutes left over, so would certainly like to, to answer a few questions if we can. I'll, I'll just call all of our presenters back. Um, look, the, the first one I've got I'll, I'll probably throw to, to Bradley, um, and that, that's uh, what operating hours do you expect to, to do at the Fallon site this hub? Well, once we get going, uh, Rowan, our, our expectations, it will run 24 hours. Very good. And, and that, yeah. that would uh, be, and uh, do, you wanna, do you want to just quickly go through the other sites? Yeah, I can do, yeah. So uh, Gundawindi West will also be uh, looking at 24 hours. Uh, Gundawindi East will be, uh, it'll be dependent on, on demand, really. It, it could be uh, it could be 18 hours, it could be 20 hours, it may be 24 as well. We really need to uh, see what that demand is on, on that site. Uh, the, the, the remaining sites at this stage, we're, uh, we're looking at um, basically just daylight hours, so, so 12 hour runs there. Uh, there is the possibility, though, if demand requires that the tour will, will go to extended shift as well. Fantastic. Thanks, Bradley. Uh, look, the next one, I, I might go to Brad Foster. Um, and that one is, you, you did sort of uh, allude to, to potentially needing to wait for, for deliveries first, but do you have a, any idea on, on how long you think it might take for, for samples to get tested if, if a grower does drop them off using the, the correct bag and delivery advice? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, if there's no trucks and what have you around, it, it will be tested um, very quickly, basically, as as it's there. Um, you know, so if someone can can wait, um, we can certainly, you know, be able to test it in the time it takes a, a few minutes and, and get those results straight through. Um, but as I said, if there's a number of trucks, it's it's till we get a break in the line. So it, it might be half an hour or, or something along those lines, but um, no different to any other year though. It's, it's you know, just yeah. when we can get a break in the line. Great. Thanks, Brad. Uh, look, next one uh, I'll probably put to Matt Simon, who's who's joined us. Um, that's just uh, growers have noticed uh, that on our, our new delivery advice, there's there's a mention around glyphosate, or whether crops have been sprayed in crop with glyphosate. Um, can you just give us a bit of insight into to what that's referring to, Matt? Yeah, sure, Rowan. Uh, and good evening, Rowan, and good evening to everyone. Yeah, the glyphosate question is predominantly around our, our malt barley. So there is a mandatory uh, question that when we are doing a load that we have to ask the grower or their representative is that has the, the crop been applied with glyphosate 
Um, and if it's a yes, then the maximum the grade that 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 load can go is BAR one. But if it hasn't been treated with glyphosate, then it is eligible to be a malt grade, depending on the variety and obviously the parameters that um, for the quality to make it fit that grade for purpose. Very good. Thanks, Matt. I think that looks like we've got, got through the questions. Um, so thanks for those that, that submitted them. Um, that, that probably concludes our, our webinar for this evening. Um, if you do think of any follow-up questions, we'd, we'd certainly encourage you to reach out to the appropriate people prior to harvest. Um, we'll be sending out a contact list to, to everyone uh, in the next couple of days with, with all the appropriate contacts for for your region, your site managers, area managers, grain marketers, etc. Um, so please keep an eye out for that on your, your email and, and make sure you update your phone with the, the correct contacts prior to harvest. Um, and I guess, yeah, from me, thanks very much for, for attending. Wish everyone a safe and, and trouble-free harvest. Thank you. <laughs>